Welcome ladies and gents, Chris Andre here. You can find me at Bet Boxing on Twitter. Of course, you can subscribe to the channel, Let's Talk Boxing. I want to talk about Tyson Fury because he's actually made a suggestion which from a fighting perspective is actually quite interesting. There is an appeal there, there is intrigue there, but the timing of this and his general conduct is so damaging to his PR that he's actually at risk now of destroying a legacy. A legacy which should be a lot greater than people are giving it credit for and his own conduct is what is causing this. So let's get into this and let's talk about it. First and foremost, he put out an Instagram story where he said that John Jones is looking for an opponent and if there's somebody he wants to fight, it could be him. Now, John Jones had said earlier in the week that he'd be willing to fight Tyson Fury in a boxing fight. Now, John Jones is being pronounced as the greatest of all time in the UFC. They seem to pronounce somebody new as the GOAT every week over there, to be honest with you. But it would certainly transcend the sport and it would create a lot of money. He then went on later on to say, how about John Jones and Francis Ngannou on the same night? Now, from the perspective of intrigue, this actually is more appealing. And I'll tell you why. On any given night, on a one-on-one -on -one situation, either of these guys has very little chance against Tyson Fury in a boxing ring. It's not because they're not great fighters. It's just that the methodology of how you train to strike is very different in an MMA octagon than it is in a boxing ring. For instance, the manner in which you evade a shot in the octagon is different to how you would evade a shot in boxing. Certain things, certain slips and moves that you would do as a boxer if you tried doing them against somebody that can use their legs would get you into trouble. And vice versa when an MMA fighter tries certain things against a boxer in a boxing ring. However, when you're talking about fighting both men on the same night, let's say he was to fight Francis Ngannou over six rounds and he couldn't get Ngannou out of there. And although he's dominating the fight, and Ganu, carrying the big punch and power that he does, is able to land some shots on Fury to the head and to the ribs. He could end up bruising Fury. He could end up cutting Tyson Fury. If that happened, then a damaged Fury would be facing a very fresh, fluid, and languid John Jones. That then develops intrigue. So as a circus show type of act, I'm not against this, when... George Foreman was desperate to get Muhammad Ali in the ring for a rematch and he couldn't prize him back into the ring. He decided to start doing all sorts of outlandish things and one of them was to fight multiple guys on the same night. They weren't very high level guys but he just wanted to obliterate a bunch of dudes on the same night and he was doing that and he was trying to generate intrigue and Ali was a ringside as well, trash talking him and stuff like that. It was interesting, it created appeal, right? However, the timing of this couldn't be worse. The fact of the matter is, anything Tyson's doing now, you're just having people say, he ducked Usyk though. Yeah, but it's any excuse to duck Usyk and so on and so forth. It is unfinished business that the public will never forgive him for. In addition to that, it's not as though he got greedy or there's just a difference in viewpoint when it comes to money and he's actually ready to take on other big challenges. If that was the case and he got in the ring with AJ, Ruiz, Hergovic, Zhang, Joyce, someone like that, and then he was to fight Alexander Usyk, then it would actually be a fantastic year for Fury. Yeah, the first half of the year would have been very, very frustrating, but to fight two fighters of that caliber, you're going to look back at 2023 and say, wow, what an incredible year for Fury, especially if he wins those fights. Now, I know a lot of you out there are screaming at your screens. He did try to fight Anthony Joshua. Fair enough. Let's say you say that was a legitimate offer, and I don't necessarily disagree with you. I do think he would have taken that fight with AJ right now. I don't blame AJ for not taking it. He needs time with Derek James, in my opinion. He's not the guy he once was. I don't blame him for focusing on Dillian White with a view to fighting Deontay Wilder in December. Having said all that, even if you eradicate AJ from the scenario, there are a number of other guys there. Even if you say, well, Ruiz priced himself out of 20 million, you've still got more guys. The winner of Joyce to Zhang, or step aside money for one of them, for Joyce, and then you take on Zhang, or Hergovic, or Frank Sanchez. There are other top level guys that Fury could be facing. They're not going to forgive him for a sort of circus show that might carry a pill if he finishes his business against Usyk and then decides he's gonna start a new chapter, then we do wanna see those fights. But currently, this is very damaging to Fury's reputation. Now let's talk about legacy. You see, legacy is a very fragile thing because it actually relies on the interpretation of future generations. The Cambridge Dictionary defines legacy, and I quote, as something that is part of your history or that remains from an earlier time, unquote. It remains from an earlier time.
In other words, it's something that the modern day eyes observe, something of the past, and they then interpret it. Now, why is this important? If you consider, for instance, various warriors of the past, they become mythologized. Their attributes become exaggerated. Take, for instance, the movie Braveheart, right? Remember when Mel Gibson, the character William Wallace, gathers the Scottish army together to face the English, and they're seemingly facing this insurmountable task, and he's trying to G up the soldiers. And one young soldier dismisses the idea that this is really William Wallace because he's heard that William Wallace is seven feet tall. And William responds, yes, I've heard, kills men by the hundreds, and if he were here, he'd consume the English with fireballs from his eyes and bolts of lightning from his ass, and everybody starts laughing. The point is that the mythology was so exaggerated, they made him out to be a superhero, not a normal man who happened to be a warrior, he was a superhero. And we see this when they're considering fighters of the past. How many times do they talk about fighters through rose-tinted spectacles? They make out like the modern-day top fighters today would just get obliterated by the boxers of the past. It wouldn't even be close, right? Well, by the same token, when someone loses their mythology, loses their magic, that also snowballs. And you can get a situation where somebody becomes undermined in years to come. And that could potentially happen to Tyson Fury. In fact, we're seeing signs that that's already happening. Let's consider some of the biggest achievements in Tyson Fury's career. He beat Vladimir Klitschko away in Dusseldorf. He's beaten Deontay Wilder on three occasions. He's beaten Derek Chisora on three occasions. The first two in particular would rank among his best achievements. And of course, he's also beaten Dillian White, who was a very devastating knockout victory. But let's talk about how they're being observed at the moment, in the last few months, for instance, by people who are very critical of Tyson Fury, whether they're fans or analysts or other fighters or whatever. The Vladimir Klitschko victory was just Fury in a boring fight against a guy who wasn't that hungry. The version that fought AJ was much better. And also, Tyson Fury ducked to the rematch. As for Deontay Wilder, yeah, that's a great fight, but it's three wins against the same guy. How about Dillian White? He's chinny. And Derek Chisora, oh my word, that third fight, what's he going to do next? Fight Derek Chisora for a fourth time? The reality, though, is somewhat different to those interpretations. When he was going to fight Vladimir Klitschko, many people gave him absolutely zero hope. For those of us who actually picked him to beat Vlad, we used to get trolled laughed at you're clueless you don't know anything about boxing and so on and so forth and now look at the way it's being changed he ducked the rematch if he was confident about beating vlad in the first fight considering how easily he beat him more easily than he would have expected believe me he's not going to be shook to fight him again if anything he'd be even more confident how about dillian white well white did have that knockout at the hands of pavetkin but that's an uppercut that would have taken out any heavyweight it was devastating Prior to that, he was winning the fight handily. He dropped Dillian on a couple of occasions and he obliterated him. He obliterated Povetkin, sorry, in the rematch as well. Prior to that, Dillian also had a long run of fantastic victories, one of the best CVs in the heavyweight division. And there's a reason that Ring Magazine rated him at number four when Tyson Fury beat him. As for Derek Chisora, the third fight, of course, was a joke. No one wanted to see that. But the first fight, Fury was still a novice. Chisora was on the up and up as well. But. He was a lot more experienced than Fury. Many people felt that Fury would lose that fight. And in the second fight, although Chisora was the underdog, he was considered a real handful. And many people consider that to be Tyson Fury's best performance of his entire career because nobody expected him to make it look that easy. Then comes Deontay Wilder. Three fights against a puncher who has that sort of speed, a guy that can take you out in any given second. Let's look at this from a mathematical perspective. Let's say for argument's sake, Deontay Wilder on any given night has 50% chance of knocking you spark out because of that power. And let's not forget, he dropped Tyson Fury four times over three fights and he very well nearly knocked him out. Well, if you look at it from a mathematical perspective, you have to multiply those 50% chances by each other. In which case, if you've got 50% chance of a given outcome on three separate occasions, like a coin toss, then you'd only have one in eight chance of getting the correct answer on all three occasions. If you look, for instance, to the right-hand side of the screen, I've picked three evens money selections. This is just random selections. Don't go betting on this, guys. And you can see if you place a pound, you get eight pounds return. So the chances of Fury not being knocked out against the guy who has 50% chance of knocking him out on any given night 
is actually quite low. Now, to be fair, this is quite a simplification because this would suggest that there is no impact on the second coin toss compared to the first one. Whereas with fighting, it's a little bit different because Fury would have learned certain things from the first fight. So he might have increased these chances of winning in the second fight. Having said that, although he obliterated Wilder in the second fight, if you were to look at that as an observer, you would think that, oh, okay, the third fight's in the bag. Well, the third fight was much more dangerous for Tyson Fury and he was dropped on a couple of occasions. So obviously it's not quite as clear cut as this. I'm just using this as an analogy, but I'm trying to explain that on any given night, Deontay Wilder would have a massive chance of knocking Tyson Fury or indeed anybody in history out. So beating him on three occasions away from home in the United States is no mean feat. It's not the same as, say, Haney and Cambosos, whereby Cambosos isn't a puncher. So if Haney has his number in terms of style and skill set, it's an easy night's work. It will never be an easy night's work for Tyson Fury against Deontay Wilder. And if they keep fighting each other, the fact of the matter is realistically speaking the skill set of Tyson Fury is probably not going to last as long as the power of Deontay Wilder his skill set or what enables him to utilize his skill set speed reflexes and so on and so forth recovery rate that's going to decline more quickly than Wilder's power so you can't undermine the achievements of Fury and yet people do this is why recency bias and the general narrative is such a a valuable and important thing when it comes to how Tyson Fury is going to be judged by future generation. And yet these things Tyson Fury is not getting credit for. His legacy is being diminished and he only has himself to blame because he keeps going out there on social media, putting out these stupid videos instead of keeping his head down and making a decision. If what Alan Babich is saying is true and your body is broken down and you cannot operate at the elite level anymore, no one should hold it against you. I certainly won't. It's not your fault if you don't have the tools anymore, physically speaking. I will always come here and say, listen, he never proved it in terms of CV maybe, but he was one of the best heavyweights I ever saw in terms of ability. That's my subjective view. And you know what? If you want to go out there and fight Francis Ngannou or John Jones, I'll watch that fight. But what you can't do is hold on to the belt, not fight some of the biggest names in the heavyweight division, and talk about these other sideshows because it's affecting how people remember you. It's affecting the legacy of even the biggest achievements that you've reached in the sport. Someone needs to put an arm around Tyson Fury. He's at a precipice. You fight two big named fighters this year and you come through them. You fight say Andy Ruiz and Alexander Usyk. Wow, man, what a 2023. You don't and you keep doing what you're doing and in 10 to 15 years from now, People will not remember you in the way you want to be remembered. Let me know what you think, ladies and gents. Please don't forget to hit a stiff jab on the like button, a right cross on the subscribe button, and an uppercut on the notifications button. Thanks for watching. Chat to you soon. Take care. God bless.